this overnight. Stay chasing payments, hard times done changed, and I can't be saving now. I do this overnight. I know you're thinking this life is really amazing. And do this overnight. Look at all the nonsense I've been through. So called beef with you know who? Did it myself. Why don't you? Why don't you do this overnight? Don't expect help when it all fall through. Everyone to tell you it's all on you. Right or wrong. Uh, today we are going to talk about um, how to win called market prospects. You have two types of markets as you work in your business. The first one is the cold market and the other one is the what? The warm market. Are we together? The warm market are those friends and family and the people who know you personally. And um, we're also saying that when you begin your business, kind of market you begin with is your own market. And the reason as to why you should begin with your own market, they're the ones who know you, they're the ones who trust you, and the, of course they are also the ones who uh, can help your business get started very fast. But the flip side to the own market is the fact that um, you should always be prepared that the people that you love are going to be sometimes your biggest dream stealers. And the, the reason as to why many people avoid their own market, it's because when the person that you know, your friend, your brother, your sister, your family member, rejects you, it feels bad emotionally. Isn't it? And that's the reason as to why many people avoid their own market. But we are saying that as you are marketing, you should not always care so much about other people's that, what? feelings. Are we together? In fact, uh, most of the whole market people, in fact, when I began the business five years ago, I told you it took me one month and a half to get my very first person. Because all my friends I told about the business, first of all, they kind of knew me, and they knew I was broke. They knew my background. They knew probably some things had tried and had failed, and most of them said no. And it is very tempting for you to say, because one or two or three or ten or a hundred of your friends have rejected you, it's very easy for you to do it, to kind of say, let me leave the people that know me, let me just work with the strangers. Now, that is very wrong. Are we together? You should um, always be more insisting. I told you the training we did the other day that if you don't buy the vision first, no one else is going to do what to buy the vision. And I also want to say, much as my training is about cold market, is that most of the people that join you initially are people that you know or know something about you. Much as at first they first do what? Reject you. Are we together? So you should always be a little bit more insisting. Now we're also saying that of course, they'll tell you it is a scam. They'll question why you're doing it. They'll relate to other companies that probably came before. They'll relate to pyramids and ponzi's and all that. I get what I'm telling you. It's a very common thing. Always be prepared for that. And we're saying that keep in mind, uh, Farida, keep in mind that you don't need anyone's approval about what you're doing. And I told you in the training we did on uh, Saturday, no, 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 on Thursday, that... When you care so much about other people's feelings, you cannot be able to move on. And I also told you that one of the reasons as to why most of the times I'll talk about the training, we don't approach our people. Who are your people? Your friends, your hobbies, your classmates, that class of people that are like you. It's because you are caring so much about their approval. So um, now we are also going to talk about the cold market. And these are individuals who have no clue about you. Are we together? Why should you call the prospect? Yes, you have people that know you, but why is it that you should also endeavor to talk to those people, the strangers, the ones you meet on the street? First of all, we are saying that many networkers are failed about what is going to happen when they finish their own market. Are we together? When I finish the people who know me, my friends, my hobbies, my OGs, what is going to happen? It's a common thing that people will... Um, 
always say that probably what if people get finished? What if I don't have anyone to talk to? What if no one joins me? There are always those what ifs. Have you seen those ones? In, um, especially as you talk to new people. Have you seen those ones? Okay. Now, I think they are very wrong. They're really wrong. One, continue. Uh, is that uh, the truth is that in network marketing or in any business really, you're never going to run out of people you're going to talk to. The cold market is endless. You notice that you know there are more people that you don't know than the ones you do what you know. Are we together? When you look on the, go to the streets, to the malls, uh, to, 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 uh, to the saloons, to several places, to the airport, to, to the uh, taxi parks and what of you, what are you seeing? A lot of what? People. Are we together? So for someone to say there are no more people to talk to, then I think they are really, really very what? Wrong. In fact, there are more people to talk to that you can never finish. Are we together? How many millions is the Ugandan population? Pardon? P pardon? Okay, about 49. Or let us say over 40. Are we together? That is over what? Over 40. Now, I am the top one, but I only have um, 200,000 accounts in my business. Now, that is the whole of Africa where my business is. 200,000 accounts. That includes people I've joined with the three accounts, with the seven accounts, and incidentally, those are the majority. Are we together? You notice that many people, even those who begin with one account, eventually, when they understand the business, they add in what? Accounts. Are we together? So many, many people in your business will always be those ones who have multiple what? Accounts. Are we together? So um, that means that we have not even covered a million people in the whole of Africa. So you're always meeting people as you go out about with your day in the restaurants, in the stores, in the banks. So I want you to notice that in your network marketing business, your capital, the people that what you're looking for are people. Am I right? So as you go about your day, as you do your different things, let your eyes be open to the people that are serving you, to the people that you are serving the service providers, the friends that you meet, the people whom, with whom you meet at wedding meetings, the people you're working with, all those ones that people can join your business. Now, um, we're also saying that now, the problem, and this is the challenge with network marketing, the problem is not having enough people to talk to. The problem is your confidence to approach the cold what? Market. So, you... you the area you should work on is not the people. Your area is the confidence. Are you confident to talk to that person you meet? Are you confident to talk to that person who has given you a service? Are you confident to that person whom you probably have worked with somewhere? The confidence is the key thing. And like I told you on Thursday in the training, confidence is the number one attribute to a successful networker. And we say that as a networker, you must be what? Bold. Can everyone say bold? bold. Can you say, everyone say bold? bold. You, can, you must always be what? Bold. Are we together? So when you learn cold prospecting, when you are that kind of networker, who if you are driving, some of us are normally going to upcountry, you are going to Lira, you are going to Gulu, you are going to Ajuman, you are going, some of you are going to other countries. You should not go to those places just to find people there. Are we together? Even on your way there, in the plane, in the bus, even on your way there, those are people that you are talking to. Are we together? So you should always have your eyes open towards those people. So we're saying that if you are the kind of networker who can, um, uh, okay, if you learn code prospecting, you become the kind of networker who can be dropped anywhere in the world. And within six months, you have been able to generate a huge what? Income. Are we together? Now, so what should you do? What should you do as a networker, especially in the area of cold prospecting? We are saying, number one, the first thing I should do is to get out of your comfort zone. Be bold and talk to people. And that is all you have to do. Can we do it together? Huh? Get out of your comfort zone. Be bold. Talk to people. That's all you have to do. Just get out of your comfort zone.
Be a bold person. Be a confident person. And know that while that person is a stranger, you'll say what? A stranger. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And think about it. What is the worst that someone can do when you approach them? What's the worst? The worst they, they can do is to say no. That is all. And the question is, who said everyone should say yes? The challenge with us in the in workers, while we are prospecting, we, all, we only want to talk to people who we are sure they are going to do what to say yes. I told you on Thursday, focus more on the what? On the numbers. Focus more on getting your information out there. Focus more on knowing that how many people know I'm in business. How many people know I have this kind of product? How many people know? I get what I'm telling you. It's just like the way you, if you have a shop. The focus is not really who comes and buys. The focus is really how many people know my shop? How many people know that I'm selling these kinds of dresses, party dresses? So that when they have a party, they are going to think about me first. Are we together? And remember, no, it's not all the time that someone will have a what? A party. Now, likewise, in network marketing, it's not all the time that someone is looking for an opportunity to do. That's the reason that's why you talk to some people right now, they join you when? Four years later. An example is Alan. Where is Alan Oswata? Over there. I talked to him in 2015. And I think during that time, we were still comfortable with poverty. <laughs> he didn't join. Three years later, he joined willingly, like very willingly. Are you getting what I'm telling you? I talked to Damien, and she was very hesitant. She was happy with what she was doing. Two years later, she's the one who looked for me. Hello, Mohose, how are you? Then I'm like, hey, you still exist. You see? But how could Damien contact me? It is because she knew I was in the business. I met Nicholas one day. In a, we were in um, Nicholas Liatemba. I think uh, we had gone to meet someone in someone's office. So I meet Bambi to Nicholas, my friend. I opened the, I was new, maybe about one week or two old. I pulled out the magazine. I told him, Nicholas, look, I have a new company we can be able to work on. And he said, Mohose, never tell me those things. Can you imagine? And that was very hurting from my friend. Very hurting. But it was a good thing, especially in the marketing and sales or in network marketing. When someone knows you're in the business, when someone knows you have this kind of product, that's already good enough. Let me tell you. So on May 25th, 2015, about four months later, we were launching Alliance Motion Global. And guess what people were doing? They were putting those up, the whole conference on Facebook. People were saying, we are launching M Global officially. M Global is launching. And they took selfies and put them on Facebook with a lot of people. It was a big convention. And guess who was watching? Nicholas. So he knew I was in Alliance. He came all the way from Kazo. He told you that story walking. Just look for me. And when he reached, he said, Hey, Mozi. I was at the distance. He called me. And then he said, I've come to borrow 10,000 from you. And I don't understand how he was borrowing 10,000. And he said, But I also want to join. This thing of yours is big. Like he was shocked that, you know, we are really so many. And the following day, 26th of May, he joined. What if Nicholas did know about my business? I like the way people think. I'll tell my friend about the business when I make some money. Let me tell you something. Other people are not sleeping. They are going to talk to them before that time. Are we together? Talk to that person right now. They are following your story. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Talk to that person right now. They are watching your status. Talk to that person right now. They are probably being approached by other people. But if you are the first one to talk to them, then when they think about joining, they will join who? They will join you. Are we together? So, we shall proceed anyway. So, strike what you should you do now. You strike a conversation with everyone along your work days. When an ordinary person goes to the bank, they just go to the tailor 
and you bring in their bank slip, whatever it is, and then they pick their money, they go away. They don't say hello, they don't say hi, they don't be nice. A networker, when you go to the bank, you read the name tag of the person serving you. You say, hello, Susan, how are you? Thank you for the service. And then you look for all ways to create a conversation with them. Are we together? When a normal person goes to pick money from mobile money, they say, excuse me, Nyabo, give me 10,000 or 50,000. Are we together? That's a normal person. A networker goes and greets, hello, how are you, madam? How is everything? Please help give me this amount of money. And you even wise can create conversations. So how is work? How are you managing the weather? If it is raining, if it is shiny, talk about that. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a normal person goes to a party, they go to eat food and have fun. Are we together? When a networker goes to a party, they are looking for people to talk to. You sit next to a person and say, Hey, so um, um, uh, do you know the groom or you know the bride? Are we together? And then you start the conversation there. Comment about the cake. Comment about the decor. Oh, this is a very fantastic decoration. Are you getting what, even if you're the one who did it? Like, <laughs> all you're doing is looking for the person. When a normal person sits in a, in, 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 goes in a taxi, are we together in a matatu? They, 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 they just enter and they look this side. Are we together? Then the neighbor also looks where? This side. And, but a networker, immediately they go in, they say, hello, how are you? How is everything? How is work? And then they, they you know, they are trying to be happy. They are trying to be friendly. Are we together? When a normal person goes to church, imagine church. People don't even greet in church. Are we together? Until the pastor says, please hug your neighbor. And then, <laughs> and then you look where to begin from. <laughs> So a networker, you're always on the lookout to people to be nice to, to people to compliment. You're always on the lookout to people to say hello to. You're always in the, in the look to for start a conversation with someone. Are we together? And you don't even have to uh, think about closing them, uh, presenting to them. Just go out and be nice. We're saying that talk to people sitting next to you. Uh, get to know where they come from, what they do, all that. Are we together? So if you receive really good service from someone, compliment them. Tell them I've enjoyed your service. When someone, a waiter has served you, a normal person, what will they do? They will just leave the money there and go away. Are we together? A networker will say, oh, thank you. The food was delicious. I like it. By the way, what's your name? They say, my name is who? Is Fiona. Are we together? And then they, you proceed. The next time you go there. Now, when they tell you their name, you may forget it. Get a name list and write it there. Are we together? You don't have her number, so you write Fiona working with a, a, a visionary's restaurant. Are we together? Or dream, dream something restaurant. Are we together? So the next time you are going there, you have forgotten the name. You just open your name. So remember, oh, the waiter there is called who? Fiona. Are we together? So immediately you go in, you're like, hi, Fiona, how are you? She's surprised you got to know her what? Her name. Kumbe had written it somewhere. Ask their contact information. Maybe, for example, if you you have strike a good conversation with someone, or you have met him over and over again, get their contacts. Are we together? So after a week or two, call them up and invite them for coffee or something like that. So the key thing is this. Meet people. Are we together? Keep in touch with them. Build a relationship. By building a relationship, you are building what? Trust. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's why when you go to the bank, you may not get a person's number immediately, but remember their name. Are we together? Next time you go back, mention their name. The next time you go back, mention their name. Next time you go back, say hello to them. By that time, you have already built a what? A relationship. Then maybe you could pick their contact. And after picking their contact, keep in touch, like their status. Nowadays, I love status so much. Like their status and maybe send them a Facebook request. Before you know it, they have become your friend. I will trust you. Rejection does not mean you are not good enough. That's the thing about rejection. Rejection does not mean that you're good, not good enough. It means that the other person has failed to notice what you have to do, what to offer. So when I opened my magazine to Nicholas, he said no. He didn't reject me. He just didn't understand what I had to offer. When he understood later, he did what? He joined. So how do you approach a cold market prospect? How do you approach them? I think there are about four steps. Step number one, is break the ice. Can anyone say break the ice? Tell them break, break the ice. Now, when you meet a stranger, 
Maybe you've gone to church. Maybe you've gone for their service, whatever it is. They are a stranger. You also say, what? A stranger. So the first thing that you do is to break the what? The ice. How do you break the ice? By greeting. How do you feel when you meet a stranger and they greet you? How do you feel? It kind of uh, releases, reduces the tension. Am I right? So you meet someone and say, hello, how are you? You say, jebaleko. You say, jambo. Are we together? You say something. Are we together? You can even wave and you say, oh, hi. And then you leave it at that. The moment you do that, somehow the gap between stranger and stranger kind of does what? Reduces. So as a networker, get into a habit of the first thing you do when you meet someone is to greet. So break the ice by greeting. Step number two, after you have greeted a person, they are still a stranger, they are still not your friends, what do you do? The next one is get a pickup line. Tell them about get a pickup line. A pickup line is a way to start a conversation. Are we together? And like Linda said, you must be confident. You must be bold. And, I, 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 and really, I want you to understand that go out there and not look for people to join you. Go out there to be nice. It's, it's just that. When you're nice, naturally people will like you, will trust you, and they will join you. So go out there to be like, go out there to make someone's day. And I'm thinking that even if someone didn't join you, but make their day. Be that nice stranger. And it's a good character in a networker. So, uh, uh, get a pickup line. How do you get a pickup line? How do you start a conversation with someone who is a complete stranger? Two, two, two ways. Number one, compliment them. Tell them about compliment them. People have compliments. Tell them, oh, that's a very nice tie that you have. Are we together? Oh, you are very smart. By the way, what do you do? Are you getting what I'm telling you? Oh, I like your hair. Are you getting what? Oh, I like your watch. So get something about them that you like. Of course, not uh, anything on their body. Are we together? Don't tell someone I like your nose. Are we together? <laughs> all, it can be a statement, all observation. A statement, all observation. I don't know. Let me say that you are at a petrol station and, you know, somehow either the prices of fuel have gone up or they have gone down. I get all like, oh, wow. Today the fuel is very good. Are we together? And then you, you probably talk about it. He will comment. I'm sure he will comment. Like, oh, yeah. And then you continue with the conversation like I'm going to be able to share with you. Are we together? So it can be an observation. It can be a statement. It can also be a question. You could get a pickup line with a what? With a question. Are we together? And the, I like the way uh, when I was starting the business, I used to stay of network marketing. I used to stay in SETA. And I always wanted to talk to my neighbor who is in a, in a taxi with me. So I go in. The first thing you always say is to say, hi. And I'll be a bit. I'll be a very good neighbor. Are we together? I, I was busy. I had audios to listen to. I had a book, books to read. But you don't do that. Are we together? you be a good neighbor. So I, 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 you get in. After getting in, and uh, I would ask, uh, of course, I've already said how to someone. And I would say, excuse me, by the way, how much is the transport from here to SETA? Are you also going to SETA? And then they would tell me. Now, the truth is that I knew the transport to SETA because that's where I stayed. Sometimes they would be seeing git, SETA, come and be SETA, come and be SETA, come and be But you're only asking a question so that you get a pickup what? Line where to begin a conversation from, how together. Or I would ask, Excuse me, how long is it from here to SETA? Are we together? How long does it take? Then the person will comment, if there's no traffic jam, uh, three hours, then as they are talking, I'm imagining, ah, please say no. You know? <laughs> but it's a what? It's a question. Are we together? You could ask a question, someone, maybe where they, you can buy something. So a question, a compliment, an observation, a statement, all those are very good pick up what? Lines to the stranger. Step number three is to keep the conversation flowing. Keep the conversation doing what? Flowing. Now, how do you keep the conversation flowing? Don't be in a rush to introduce your business. Don't be in a rush to conclude. Don't think that you must say special things and whatever it is. Continue the conversation according to the prevailing what? Circumstances. Are we together? You are someone, they tell you that um, 
Maybe Seta is two hours from here. You say, hey, it's really that far. Are we together? And the person goes, say, well, it's not far, but maybe because of traffic jam and what of you. Then talk about the traffic jam. Talk about, hey, but uh, surely, you know, Uganda should um, do something. The roads are narrow and what of you. And think, talk about walkways. Talk about the fact that, but I think what really causes jam are these matter tools. They should think about a train. Uh, they talk about the border borders. Talk about potholes. Like, Continue the conversation the way it is doing what? Flowing. Are we together? You've taught someone you have a very beautiful bag. They're like, oh, thank you. So where do you buy it from? And then they say, I bought it from here and what of you? I bought it from, from Mabilizi Complex. Hey, but I'm told Mabilizi really has very beautiful things. Are we together? They are going to say, oh, yeah, it has and what of you? It is, it is. Talk about Mabilizi. Talk about shopping. Talk about everything. Are we together? Talk about that you are a fan of bags and all that. Are we together? Say, oh, baby, let me just have, let me have, a, it's filled. Oh, it's, uh, you know, the leather and what of you. Keep the conversation flowing according to the prevailing circumstances. How you start the pickup line, continue the conversation naturally. Are we together? Then the conversation will change slowly by slowly, and then you could ask them later on what you do and all that. Keep the conversation. Just be a nice neighbor. Consider it to be like they are giving you company. I get what I'm telling you. Remember, you're looking for one thing. Someone to like you, someone to trust you. Are we together? Now, step number three, close by getting the person's contact or making an actual invitation or an actual sale, depending on how long the conversation was. You could say something like, oh, I've enjoyed talking to you and all that. Then you leave it at that. You could say, oh, buddy, did you say that you're a teacher? Yes. Okay, well, I don't promise you much, but... Um, there's a project that is coming up with a company I'm working with, and uh, as a teacher, if you're interested in something to do part-time, I could call you and look at the presentation. Are we together? Give a disclaimer and then move on. Are we together? You could say something like, oh, did you say that you're, you're an accountant and a lot of you? Give me your contact. You never know. Something may come up. And take mine too, please. Are we together? Then maybe a few days later, call them and say, oh, hi, Fiona, how are you? This is Elias, met in a taxi, whatever. Make sure they don't forget you. Do it within 20, 24 to 36 hours. Are we together? What, what, two days to three days. Hi, how are you? Elias Mohoz, we met, whatever. Ah. But nowadays, it's even easier. Are we together? Uh, the moment you reach home, go look for them on WhatsApp. Are we together? Tell them, hi, so and so. This is uh, your friend, whatever, with the one you met in the thing. Yeah, I'm just really uh, hitting you up on WhatsApp. This is my WhatsApp number. Save it. Much as you know, they saved it. Are we together? And then say cheers. Leave it at that. What conversation do you have with a cold prospect? Number one. Okay, first of all, like I was telling you as I was training you earlier, that the downside to cold marketing prospecting is that they don't necessarily know you, like you, and trust you. That's the problem. The challenge is that the stranger, number one, they don't know you. Number two, they don't like you really. They also don't trust you. So how are you, you are able to do it is that People only buy from, and you know it, that people only buy from the people they know, they like and trust, normally. And then also, we are saying that, so, part of being a successful, or part of being successful at cold prospecting is being able to build, is being able to build that know, like, and trust factor quickly. You meet a person, your interest is to create and build the know, the like, and trust factor as quickly as possible. And part of doing it is that you keep the conversation light, like I was telling you, and your goal is to build rapport with your prospect. Just build rapport. Talk about whatever you can talk. Afterwards, just take the, oh, I enjoy talking to you. Let's exchange numbers. We never know. We may meet again. That is all. Are we together? Then I'm sure they give you their WhatsApp number. Then start the conversation on WhatsApp. Get to know them. Don't give too much information. Talk less and listen more. Are we together? So when you, uh, 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 when you, when you are meeting a person for the very first time, don't be the one who is talkative and talking and talking and talking. Are we together? You should give them a chance to talk. I know someone who uh, was I was meeting a friend of mine and they were commenting about a mutual friend that we have and they said uh, uh, um, that one of the reasons why I don't like that person is because. They talk too much about themselves. They don't give you a chance to talk about yourself. Are we together? The person, if you want to be a very good conversationist, B, 
be that person who gives a chance to people to talk about themselves. Touch Chenga. So, ask questions that encourage them to talk about themselves. Are we together? And one of the reasons why you're doing that, you are collecting information that you can use while interesting them to your business or the what? The product. Know what they do, know where they work, know their names, know whatever it is. Ask, ask more questions. Let them listen to them. And when you ask questions and you give a person a chance to talk about themselves, you are showing genuine interest in them. Before you think about closing someone, before you think about presenting to someone, let them give you information about them. Touch Chenga. If someone, now, what if someone is mean? We say that if someone is mean or just not very friendly, then you should move on. Don't try to convince someone to talk to you. Are we together? It's okay. Like there are millions of strangers. You only regret it. Like, I wish I had taken the seat behind me. Are we together? Move on, move on. There are others. Tomorrow you're going to go to another bank. You're going to go to another shop. You're going to go to another matter too. Are we together? So move on. Don't make business hard for you. It's not a do-all, die. Are we together? There are really many people. Maybe they have had a bad day. Maybe they are not good. And the person who is not friendly, who is, who, 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 who is cold to you when you are being nice to them, maybe they are not even the best person for your business. Are we together? Hmm. How to bring up your business. The only way to bring up your business is through scripts, tenable scripts. Tenable scripts. And I'm just, these are not exactly the perfect scripts. You could design them according to probably what you feel like and what of you, but um. Um, 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 they will just give you an idea of what to say. For example, there's this one. Would you be open to a side project if to not interfere with whatever you are doing for a living? Are you together? So let me have had a conversation with someone long, long, long. How do you close them? How do you bring up your business? How do you bring up the idea? Or even on WhatsApp. Are we together? You tell them, hey, by the way, you said you're a teacher, right? Would you be open to a side project if it would not interfere, interfere with your teaching. Or you said your student, right? Yes. Would you be open to a project which would not interfere with your work? With, sorry, with your studies? I get what I'm telling you. What program do you, do you do daytime or evening? Are we together? Then I say I do evening. What do you do during the day? Would you be open to a side project you can do during the day? Or I do, even, I do day. What do you do in the evening after classes? Are we together? Would you open to a project you can dedicate two hours and earn an extra what? Income. These are normal things, but Get, get the, uh, uh, it's about your confidence to bring such up. I'm sure you already know the scripts. The only thing is that we don't have the confidence to bring it up or to blend it in the conversation. Another one could be, do you keep your options open when it comes to making any money outside what you're doing for a living? Well, you could also say something. My company is in the middle of doing some expansion in your area and we're looking for some very good people. Maybe you're going to to Kulu, you're going to Mbale, you're going to Hoima, you're go, you are on a, an, uh, an aeroplane going to Nairobi, so you meet next to this Kenyan from Nairobi, and you're having a conversation with them. Like, by the way, well, my company we, uh, is in the middle of doing an expansion something in your area, and um, you could be one of the people we are looking at. So, let's call me, let's give me your number, we'll hit you up when I reach Nairobi. Give me your number, we'll hit you up when I reach uh, whatever it is. I would together have a workshop and you could come in as my guest. I could invite you. I get what I'm telling you. Really, depending on the conversation you have had with a what? With a person. Maybe someone on Facebook. And I like the fact that uh, nowadays on Facebook, you can go to Facebook and you say, a uh, 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 lady is named Sarah in Nairobi. And you look for them and you start a conversation like that. You, you, you start to like, like them, WhatsApp them, whatever it is. And you know they're in Nairobi. You can... Uh, choose to go to South Africa, uh, uh, South Africa on, on online. And I told you before that you can uh, decide to have a narrow focus on the area. You see that all my Facebook prospects majorly are going to be Nairobi. I'm going to attack Nairobi market. I'm going to attack um, uh, 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 Tanzania market. You know, we are in the best company in the world. Tell me about the best company in the world. Tell me about the best company in the world. You know what? The best time to ever do AIM Global is now, especially here in Africa. 
especially here in East Africa. Ask me why. Number one, the whole Ugandan market is your local market. Like anyone in Uganda can go to the head office and buy a product there and then. You don't have to ship it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say, send me the money. I will, bring it. I will send you the product. Like it's a local what? Market. Everyone in Kenya is your local what? Market. The presentation is in Kenyan shillings. The money is paid in Kenyan shillings. They get the product, no shipping charges, nothing. Kenya. Tanzania is your local market. Rwanda, your local market. DRC Congo is your local what? Market. Uh, 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 then uh, Zambia. Zambia, they are, they are launching like very, very soon. Is your local market. South Africa is your local what? Market. Now, even West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, those are all English-speaking people. You meet someone on Facebook and, they, you know, they like you, they trust you, whatever it is. All you have to do is they go and pay, and then they do what? They get the, the package. You know, the, the thing is that there is, Nicholas calls it the gold rush. Can you say the gold rush? We want to focus on the markets where the business is not. That is hard work. That's not working smart. You want to sponsor someone in Somalia, Mogadishu. Oh, my goodness. So what? Okay. While you are talking to them, you are hearing a bomb. <laughs> I know there are some people from Mogadishu here, but <laughs> I will get that. There are no bombs there, I think. So you want to go and sponsor someone from where? From, from Kautum and whatever it is. Start with your local market. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes, everything is good because most likely they will, um, you have a whole market around you, but the local market is very important. No one said any market is going to get finished. Are there Ugandans joining right now? Are there Ugandans joining right now? Are there Kenyans joining right now? Are there Tanzanians joining right now? Are there South Africans joining right now? Zambians, Nigerians? So why are you saying that, uh, uh, let me focus on the market where it is hard to get a package there. Let me focus on the market where I have to pay taxes. Let me focus on the market where I have to do shipping charges. Oh my goodness. You're a hard worker. Are we together? The other one. Hey, I have something that you might be interested in. Do you want to meet up and talk? It could be your friend. Uh, this could be a, some, really a friend of sorts. So someone who we have was a stranger, you built rapport with them, and you could send them uh, <clears throat> that kind of message. Now, what if they ask, what is it all about? Or what, it, what, what the business is? Now, number one, you could say something like, I wish I had time to explain to you, but I'm sorry, create an excuse. So I wish I had time to explain to you. Oh, what's that about? Can you give me some details? Tell them, I wish I had more time to explain to you. I will get to what I'm saying, but I'm sorry, you could create an excuse. Now, number one, I'm really going to pick up my kids from school. Maybe you just met them briefly. Or, I don't have my PowerPoint presentation with me. I like that one. I wish I had could get, I wish, um, I wish I had time to explain to you, but I'm sorry, I even don't have my, my PowerPoint presentation with me. I get what I'm telling you. Oh, I wish I could explain to you, but I even don't have my presentation guide with me. Are we together? I wish I could explain to you, but I didn't carry my laptop that has my presentation. That's one of them. Oh, I'm going to pick my kids to school. But saying that I don't have my presentation guide with me is a key, is a genuine excuse for you not to go into the business right away. Are we together? I don't have my presentation, PowerPoint presentation with me. And then you say, but I promise I'll follow up with you. That's already an excuse for you to call them later. But I promise I will follow up with you. A key something you can use with someone. I don't have my presentation with me, but I promise I'll follow up with you. Let me get information and I promise I'll follow up with you. And that's all. Get their number and then move on. Touch Shenga. Then what, what if they ask what's all about? You could just even say something that we are in the health industry. And uh, I love, uh, I just choose some words that uh, make you look like a big business person. Are we together? Don't talk small. Don't say it's like a business. Don't uh, belittle your business. Are we together? Uh, use good keywords that you would use to describe a big multinational what? organization. I chose this, uh, much as we are not traded publicly. I said, we are in the health industry, and I'm working with a publicly traded company from Asia. 
Are we together? I'm working with international, with a multinational company from Asia. Are we together? You may not even mention the Philippines. Maybe uh, as a country, talk about Asia. Are we together? Yeah, I'm working with a uh, with, with a publicly traded company from Asia. I'm working with a multinational company from Asia. Are we together? And um, well, you can earn anywhere between two hundred dollars. And I like it when you say it in dollars. Say about dollars. Say about dollars. Dollars, you're looking more international. Are we together? Dollars, you're looking more what? So talk dollars. Don't you worry. Everyone understands dollars. Touch shenga. Hey, say, uh, you can work anywhere. You can range from here between $200, $2,000 or even more. And uh, are we together? Still, that's a long thing. You don't have to mention it at once. But also, I love this. You, you could, uh, someone asked you, but what exactly do you do? We provide different types of trainings from classroom trainings online webinars, on-job trainings, different kind of trainings, really, for our workforce, and then you work with us part-time. Are you together? You're a teacher, but we really provide different kinds of training, from classroom trainings to online webinars. We do online trainings and whatever it is, and you blend in and you work with us. So all, those, all these really are words that you can put together, and you come up with something. Are you together? Just get the idea. Touch Schenga. And I like the original one. Are we together? It's a project with a Philippine-based company that is expanding its operations here in Uganda. And we're looking for a few key people to work with, either full-time or part-time. All these are really ideas that you can put up together and then you... I, I, I also like the fact that you can uh, appear third party. Tell me about third party. Are we together? Well, it's a project a friend of mine from the Philippines, from... Nairobi from, are we together? A friend of mine, a mutual friend of my friend from Asia, a friend of my friend from this that introduced me to, and I'm loving it. We provide online trainings and, you know, uh, 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 um, classroom trainings and webinars, and this is something you can get interested in, and you earn some money. You could make between somewhere maybe from $200 to even $2,000, or even more. There are people who are even more aggressive, and leave it at that. But when I get my PowerPoint presentation, I will explain to you. When we meet, I'll have my presentation guide. I'll present to you. You'll love it. I like another one. This is not a time you could tell us someone. I don't want to give you bits and pieces about the project, and I spoil it for you. Let us meet over a cup of coffee when I have my presentation guide. When I have my PowerPoint, I give you the full concept. We shall proceed. Who to prospect? Who to do what? To prospect. Number one, we are saying that it's very tempting and easy to prospect down. It's very easy and tempting to prospect where? Down. Prospecting down means that you are targeting people who are generally less successful in life. And this is the challenge with us is that because it is easy to prospect someone who is less successful in life, we focus on those ones. I get what I'm telling you, and I'll be a bit candid, and I'm not uh, underlooking any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, profession here, but for sure, uh, uh, you should always prospect where? Up. It's easy to hit below the belt. It's easy to prospect down, but don't do that. Are we together? Get your hobbies, get your urges, get people who think like you. People who think like you, who are just like you, they are easy to do what? To motivate. I, I want to be honest with you that uh, people who are below you, there is a person who can motivate them. Are you getting what I'm telling you? For example, if you brought for me some ladies who are working in the window market somewhere there, and what of you and men, I may not be able to motivate them, the examples I give are not them. I get what I'm telling you. The, the way I look at life, it's not them. I get what I'm telling you. Yet someone who is at their level could motivate them and inspire them. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Uh, and um, uh, especially as we also grow bigger in the business, I've also found it harder to inspire most of the people I have that I have signed up directly. Are we together? Because they will not approach me as upline. They will approach me as sir. As grand upline, are we together? They are going to want to make it up to me. That's the problem I find. 
especially as I build my business right now. Because people, they feel they are way below. So really, when you hit below the belt, that is wrong. Get your people. They know you, they like you, and the examples you give are way up there. Are you get what I'm saying? Your people, your level, and above. By the way, if there is any tip I've shared with you this year, it's that one. Good people, quality people. Are we together? When I gave examples, Sydney clicked. He was my OB from SMAC. Masters in software engineering. When I gave examples, Nicholas clicked. Fuck out of technology. We did this almost the same combinations. When I talked something, Duncan clicked. Who are the same? Are you together? When I talked something, Hajala clicked. Are we together? When I, so really, because these were my people. These were my people. So get your classmates, get your hobbies, get your orgies, get your workmates, get people you have worked with. Are we together? And I told you before that the people you love, your market, they are the ones who reject. It's emotional, but still go for them. They will not never, your friends, better let me tell you about your friends. Your friends will not always say no. Will not always say yes. Do you know why? Ask me why. Ask me why. It's easy for a friend to say no to a what? A friend. They're not trying to make you a favor. They're your friends. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So they have the, 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 uh, uh, they have the, the right to air out their opinion. Are you getting what I'm telling you? But with time, they win, you win over the vision. They see what you are doing. So make sure all your friends know. If you are still the kind of networker who is saying, ah, this friend of mine might say no. This one may diss my opportunity. This one, let me first make some money and then I will attract them. This one, you are not a flower. This one, like, you get what I'm telling you? Mm. While prospecting down is easier, prospecting up is what will get you highest quality prospects. Who will have the highest chance of success in the business? So prospecting down is easier, but really what makes you successful? What will give you a good team is prospecting quality what? Quality people. I meet many people. Excuse me, upline. I have a question for you. And then I say, okay, tell me the question. How come me, I'm the only one who works in my team. Others, I bring them, they don't do anything. It's because you don't know how to motivate them. Maybe they're not your market. I, I am the only one who works in my team. Maybe you don't know how to prospect to, to inspire them to do that. You have failed to get in touch. To, to create that rapport, to, to, to be in the same line with your downlines. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Otherwise, you should be doing the same. I remember when I started, Duncan would be there and Hajara would be there and would sit down and make phone calls. We'd say, we wake up early, we go to Ginger. We are in sync. Are you getting what I'm telling you? You could talk about similar dreams. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So really, uh, 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 the reason why your downlines may not be working it's because you don't know how to motivate them. You don't know how to inspire them. You have failed to create rapport with them. Maybe sometimes you are too distant. You are a boss. Are we together? You are a boss. Like you are, you, you brought in friends, and I've seen this also. You bring in friends after bringing in friends. They knew their friends, your bad days, and you were talking about good things and what of you before you knew it. You have suddenly become a what? A boss. Excuse me, how come today you're not smart? Can you go back? Excuse me, how come today you are late? I would excuse me, whatever it is. Excuse me. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you have created, failed to create rapport with what? With your people. Otherwise, our business works with teamwork. Teamwork is only possible with your people. Tell me about your people. Tell me about my people. Tell me about my people. Okay. If you are actively going out to prospect, now there are people, first of all, um, you cannot go out prospect. You prospect as you do what? As you go. But for sure, for sure, you could also get interested in some hobbies. You could get interested in some, uh, well, let me call them hobbies, really. You could get interested in some hobbies so that you can target some people. It's a good thing. Are we together? For example, I really expect all of us to be part of social gatherings for social groups. You could be part of uh, 
Interact, Rotaract, Rotary, Lions Club, all these are areas, markets you can do at, penetrate. What not to do? Tell your neighbor what not to do. So, cold prospecting is not kutembea. Tell your kutembea. You are not a hawker of the what of the opportunity. Please don't go out there and you say, excuse me, passers by. Would you like an opportunity to, jo to join the business? No. Don't go to the street and say, excuse me, flyers, please join me, flyers. No, don't do that. Don't just meet someone in the lift in the, at maybe one of the malls and say, excuse me, mall person. Would you be interested in a business you can do part-time? Really, without building a relationship? Go out and just be nice. Don't be moving in the mall and you tap someone, excuse me, excuse me, my name is Linda and I want to show you a business you can do part-time. No, don't do that. Are we together? Build a relationship. So we are saying that never meet someone and meet throw them a pitch or give them any materials through cut. Don't go out giving flyers. No one likes flyers. Don't go out, stand somewhere, and you, you put on a t-shirt, aim global wax. Excuse me, look here, look here. Are you getting what I'm, what I'm saying? And by the way, how many of us notice that at, at the end of the year, even when you scroll down in your phone book, you have prospects. How many of us know that? Like there are people you have met along the way. There is this someone who took you on Uber. There is someone who did what? There is someone who gave you a service. There is someone you bought a dress from. There was a service provider. There was this person. So really, it's about going out there to meet people, be their friend, keep relationship with them. Don't make it look like rocket science. Don't meet someone and you say, oh my goodness, what do I tell them? I remember when I was just starting the business, I would meet my, uh, someone in taxi, say, hello, hello, how are you, sir? Then they would reply back, hello, how are you, sir? And then I'm itching, oh, what do I say? Oh, what do I say? What do I say? And by the time we reach SETA, already, I'm already, I, I've, I still not figured out what to say. Then, then I would say, bye. <laughs> Oh my good, I would feel bad. I would want to quit network marketing. I get what I'm telling you. That, that, that is you doing the wrong thing. Go out and be nice. If they're not nice, no problem. You don't want unnice people in your business. Who wants people who are, who are no introverts, they are not serious, they are, they, are, they are cold people in their business. If you want cold people, bad people in your business, put up your hand. You want people who are outgoing. So if someone is not outgoing, so what? Thousands of people are doing what? Are we together? No one wants a stranger to come up to them and tell them to invest money in a company they have never even heard about. Are we together? Excuse me, do you have some extra money to invest? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Are we together? Then, so you don't know them, they don't know you, and all that. So really, um, um, focus on building a relationship with the person. Are we together? Don't go out there like a hawker, like a mutembe, like a machinga. Are we together? Tanzanians call it machinga. So don't go out there just to, to tap people and, you know, to immediately talk about the business, pitch the business, whatever. Go out there to look for people to be nice to, to create rapport with. Go out to make new friends. Are you getting what I'm telling you? It's going to be easier for you and you're going to find the business much more smooth. I want to end with uh, this quote that says that Really, your confidence comes naturally with success. When you become successful, you're naturally confident. And that's the reason as why some of these global ambassadors talking to strangers and what of you, maybe it's not a problem. Are we together? But we're also saying that, but success comes only to those who are confident. Success comes only to those who are and what? confident. So you must endeavor to be confident. Endeavor to be bold. Endeavor to be daring. I would together endeavor to be daring to ask someone their name, to just start a conversation with a person. I like what uh, someone who told me yesterday, and they said that really what I like about network marketing is that as long as, and especially Alliance Motion Global, that as long as someone keeps on trying, the one day they will get the right what? Person. As long as someone keeps trying. I love that. All you need 
is left and what? Right. Surely you can not be trying for a year, a second year, and you don't find one leg. Then you try a third year, fourth year, and you don't find a second what? Leg. That's why no one I've seen in the business. But yesterday I made five years club for me. <laughs> All together. Thank you. So I made five years yesterday. But let me tell you point blank. There is no one I have been, been able to see for the last three years and above. How many years? Three years and above. Who is not making money? All of them are making money. Yes, of course, some are making 200 million. Others are making 100 million. Others are making 50 million. Others are making 30 million. Others are making 10 million. But for sure, everyone who has been in the business for three years, they are happy. They are confident. One thing for sure is the business, as long as you don't quit, as long as you don't stop searching for that one person, as long as you don't keep on daring, being confident about the business, as long as you don't stop, one day you're going to become very successful. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So the key thing, don't quit. Don't ever, ever, ever quit.